Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Bolt Action Reloading. If you're looking to find out the best primer for your application, stick around. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here and you'd like to see how I and the rest of me here make our group smaller, start now by subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon. That way you get notified when I post next week's video and you won't miss anything. Guys, in today's video, we are going to start off by offending as many people as possible. A lot of what we're going to talk about today is sacrilegious to some as far as primers are concerned, but hitting this topic head on is the only way I know how to do it. We're going to be doing some primer testing today, and at least for our specific application today, the problem child powder we're talking about is Alliance Reloader 16. We've been able to get some pretty good pressure and velocity performance out of Alliance Reloader 16, being able to get consistent low standard deviations for our application has been a little bit of a mystery, especially in some of the more recent testing that we've done. We decided to tackle it head on in today's video, and I thought I would bring you guys along for the ride. We've been testing some ATIPs in 6mm Creedmoor, and the H4350 pressure curves we got were very, very good, exactly as we expected. However, when we swapped the powder to Alliance for Loader 16 with the exact same case primer and overall length configuration, our curve really just fell on its face. If there was one little data point that was out, I would accept that there's going to be a little bit of error in those measurements, but the H4350 graph, as we progressed up at two tenths, we got that little bit of higher velocity in saw loads nodes, whereas Alliance for Loader 16, we might have seen uh, a higher velocity, six tenths of a grain lower than another velocity, which has got me wondering if the primer is part of the problem, if not all of it. I'm sure the powder is going to come into play. I certainly don't want to get onto a chemical level for our analysis today. With the testing I've done, H4350 seems to work very well with Magnum primers, even though 6.5 millimeter Creedmoor is not a Magnum cartridge. I had read about it somewhere else done some testing on my own, and made my decisions. And that's what I'm always going to encourage you to do. Don't ever listen to some Yahoo on the internet tell you the way you should do everything and just assume that's the way it should be. You've got to test and find out for yourself. And that's what we're going to do today. The combination that really started down this road is the CCI 250. That primer has performed very well for us in that specific lot as well, especially in other combinations. And so I think we just have the wrong combination here for Alliance for Loader 16, and we're going to see if we can find a better one. And today's video is really going to highlight how big of a difference primers can make. Let's get into our test. We're going to get into our all analysis, and you guys are going to be able to draw your own conclusions because I'm certainly not going to tell you what to do because that's just not how we do things on this channel. For today's testing, we're using uh, some Hornady factory ammo brass that we had from 6.5 Creedmoor. We got it all annealed, sized, trimmed. It's my preference to do 10 rounds in 0.2 grain increments, but having only 35 cases, one of our primers gets, uh, gets the short end of the stick here with only five options, but I'm not certain we're going to be able to find out in 10 rounds if something's good, but we're hoping in 10 rounds to at least be able to eliminate some things and finding what isn't good. All of our primers for testing day are going to be large rifle. Our first primer that we really want to test is going to be the BR2 from CCI. Our second primer is going to be the 210M from Federal. Um, but we are going to test some Magnum, so we're bringing the 215M in, which has given us good performance, certainly with H4350, as well as some other combinations. But we're going to bring it into the test today as well. And we're going to be using Winchester Large Rifle Magnum primers for our abbreviated five round test. The projectile for today's test, previous testing for those burger bullets gave us some pretty good results. Um, though it's a little bit different platform today and it's going to affect our velocity expectations as well. The load data we're using to base our results on today um, came from Sierra. Obviously this is not a Sierra projectile, but Sierra's 140, they're saying a maximum charge of 43.5 grains of a loader 16 and give us an estimated velocity in a 24 inch barrel. This is a 26 inch barrel of 2,800 feet per second for that 24 inch barrel. So we're going to expect higher velocities for today's test, but what we'd really like to concentrate on is a clean velocity curve and see if we can find any nodes. Mostly what I'm really looking for is consistent performance. If we can find velocity nodes or not find velocity drops, it just doesn't look like we're getting consistent powder ignition and honestly having significantly lower velocities than expected as well. Backing down in 0.210 increments for 10 rounds, it's going to have a starting off at 41.7 grains, increasing in 0.2 grain increments, heading up to our max charge at 43.5 grains for our max testing today. The exception to that is the Winchester Large Rifle will be starting those at 42.7 grains and maxing out at the same 43.5 grains as everyone else. Giving us another source for load day today, we'll also be getting some information from Quick Load. 
Quick Load is going to insinuate that we're going to be over pressure as soon as we hit 43.1 grains, but we're going to be looking for that during our test, making sure we don't hit any pressure. And if we do, we're going to stop. Uh, I'll ruin it for you. We're not going to. So starting off at 41.7 grains, Quick Load is going to guesstimate our velocity at 2863 feet per second, maxing out in our 26 inch barrel all the way to 2968 feet per second. But it's saying that we're going to be able to achieve 2933 feet per second before we exceed the maximum case pressure. Not that in normal practice we'd necessarily want to do that, but just to give us an idea. For today's testing, I primarily really want to ignore the groups. I will put them up there for those of you who are obsessed, but we're really not going to address them in today. Obviously, I cared about them so much that I don't even have them in my notes that we're going over today. But when I edit the video, I will put them up for you. Kind of starting off with our first primer of the CCI BR2, and certainly one of the more pricier primers that we could be using. The BR2 started off at 2720 feet per second and crept up in a fairly reasonable fashion, but bottomed out at 2849 feet per second. Well under pressure with the BR2, and if we were looking to shoot at 2750 feet per second, a huge node from 41.9 grains to 42.3 grains, we would have to do some more testing to verify that, but it's very interesting to me that three consecutive data points were within five feet per second of each other, and that is over a, a gap of four tenths of a grain of powder. The only thing really concerning to me of that is that 43.1 grain charge dropping to 2801. A, a little disappointed to see that in the data. It's not the end of the world. And like I said, if, if it was consistent around that 42.1 grain charge and you wanted to shoot this projectile 2750 feet per second, it's certainly uh, your opportunity to do so. The next primer we're going to discuss is the 210M. It seems 2750 might very well be a node regardless of primer that we're going to talk about. Um, but unfortunately, we're not going to get the opportunity for the rest of them. I'm just going to spoil it for you. Um, the 210M, as you can see, at 41.7 grains, we shot right at 2752 and actually duplicated the 2754 number at 41.9 grains. So 210M and BR2, identical velocity at 41.9 grains. Creeping up slowly with the 210M, um, you can see we maxed out at 2881 feet per second and didn't really have any significant velocity drops. We did see you know, a little bit of a plateau at 42.1, 42.3, and again there at 42.5, and up a little bit higher as well. A fairly linear response as our charge weight increased as our velocity seemed to as well. Overall, nothing significant to complain about there. Moving to our last uh, primer that we have 10 rounds for, the 215M. Right out of the gate, we dropped 17 feet per second, but pretty much for the rest of the test, we were increasing velocity and actually had two identical velocities at 43.3 and 43.5. We hit 2911 exactly. Draw your conclusions what you like. Our last primer we're going to talk about is the Winchester Large Rifle Magnum Primer. We can see starting off at 42.7 grains, 2866 feet per second. Had a small node there, shooting 2894 and 2892, and then jumping up to finish off the test at 2914 feet per second. As far as quick load is concerned today, assuming that 2933 would have been the velocity of which we'd have went over pressure, we actually stayed under pressure. Let's just go through the brass real quick and you can look at the primers. We'll step through each primer on your screen from lowest to highest so you guys can take a look. I really think that we were pretty much under maximum case pressure for most of our testing, though there's just a touch of primer crating on our highest charge with the Winchester large rifle magnums. No real ejector marks on any of these. Once we get through looking at all the brass pressure and you guys deciding for yourselves for what you feel safe with and what you don't, we'll put all the charts on the same graph and talk a little bit about them to try and determine to see if we have any winners here. And this is where I am looking for some feedback from the viewers and to see what you guys think. Now, as far as velocity nodes are concerned, it's hard to argue with the BR2. Having such a wide plateau down at that 2750 feet per second range makes us look good, but seeing that velocity dip at 43.1 makes me a little bit nervous about committing to this primer. It just doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of ignition power in that BR2. We certainly had a lower max velocity, and honestly, according to Quick Load, we're over 100 feet per second off of the max velocity that it predicted. So not saying that it's bad, but it certainly seems like the velocity is lagging, at least compared to some of the other primers that we tested today. As far as having the fewest dips, the 210M seems to me at least to be a promising primer. Uh, I haven't been a big fan of the 210M with H4350 because it was the complete reverse as I saw more negative velocity spikes using the 210Ms with H4350. And that's why I've pretty much switched to Magnum primers, either the CCI 250 or the 215. But as far as the graph is concerned, we saw the same velocity node down at 2750 feet per second, but made it up to a higher velocity at 2881. Sticking with our theory on Magnum primers, testing the 215, the only real drop we saw there was at 41.9 grains. It had a higher velocity at all charges, 
above the 210M and BR2 and pretty much mimic the, the Winchester large rifle Magnum. And, and it seems like the, the Magnum primers had very, very similar velocities. There was a slight difference there at 43.3 grains. Between the two primers, they were only different by 6 feet per second, 2 feet per second, 3 feet per second, 19 feet per second, and 3 feet per second in that order. On that higher charge, some pretty consistent velocity, and it didn't seem like we were, at least when we were using the CCI 250 before, we weren't really hitting that maximum expected velocity until we hit that very last charge. It seems like we had to get to a higher percentage fill rate until we were getting that higher velocity that our load data was predicting with Alliance Reloader 16. It might be interesting to rerun this test with some new primers, but I'd love to hear from you guys in the comment section below. I'm kind of in the mindset that sometimes you just need to test multiple primers to see what seems to work best for the powder you're hoping to use. For the application, we're really hoping to stick with the temperature stable powder, which that's why we're looking at H4350. Pretty good results with that. Alliance for Loader 16, we're hoping for similar performance. It seems like randomly H4350 will be out of stock and you can't find it. And you can use Alliance for Loader 16 as an alternate, certainly not with the same charge weights, but should get some similar velocity, similar performance at similar burn speed. If you guys have done some primer testing with Alliance Reloader 16 and you have some input, I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below. But even if you've got your primer situation all figured out, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have any comments or questions, I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below. If you like the content we do here on the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button, turn the bell notifications to get notified when I post next week's video. I hope to see you back next week. And until then, stay safe in small groups.